Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, I'm going to look at how to automatically transfer data from one Excel worksheet to another using a VBA macro. So the idea here is that I add details of the sales call that I've made to this screen and the details automatically get added to this log of calls on the call log sheet. So I'll show you how this works. I'll just quickly fill this in for you. And once I've added the details, I can click on add to call log up here. It clears this call tracking system form. If I go to the call log sheet, you can see it's added the details of that call to this database. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this button to run the VBA code. And I'll also walk you through that code so you can adapt it to your particular project. Okay, let's get going. So the first step is to create the button. And to do that, you will need to show the developer tab on your ribbon. The developer tab doesn't show by default. So to get it to show, right click on one of the existing ribbon tabs, click on customize the ribbon. And then on the right hand side here, tick this developer tab option, click on OK, and your developer tab will appear on your ribbon. Then you want to find the insert button and under ActiveX controls, you select the command button button, click on that, and then draw your button wherever you want it to appear on your form. Then what you want to do is double click on it and that will open the Visual Basic Editor. And any code you write into the code screen here will be run whenever that command button is clicked on. First thing you probably want to do is change the text on the command button. The default text is just command button one. But to do that, you will need to show the properties window in the Visual Basic Editor. Mine is already shown, but if yours isn't, just go to view and select properties window. And then to change the caption that appears on the button you've got a caption property down here and in here we're going to write add to call log okay once you've done that you'll need to copy and paste the code that i've provided in the description of this video into this code window between the lines private sub and end sub and now i'm going to walk you through this code so if you need to you can adapt it for your project so the first thing I do here is I create and set variables for the call tracking and call log worksheets. I've named the variable for the call tracking sheet C track and the call log sheet C log. And they refer to sheet one and sheet two. If I look in my project window, I can see sheet one is call tracking and sheet two is call log. Now I've created those sheet variables. I create and set variables for each cell in the call tracking sheet. So this refers to all the cells that hold data in this form on the call tracking sheet. So for example, number called is stored in cell D8. And you can see here, I've declared a variable called number called or no called. And here I've set that variable to equal range D8 on the call tracking sheet. So I've done that for every single cell that's going to hold data on that worksheet. And then I need to create a variable that defines where on the call log sheet I am going to paste the values that are stored in these variables. Now if I switch back to the call log sheet, if this call log sheet was empty, I would just have the column headings. So I would want to paste the details of the call into row two, starting in cell A2. If there were already records within the sheet, then what I would have to do is find the next empty row. Now, how I would do that normally in Excel without code would be to use the shortcut key control down arrow key, and then I would move down an extra cell. So we need to replicate that within our VBA code. We'll see that in a moment. So I've called this variable destination cell or dest cell. And what I'm saying is if in the log sheet range A2 is empty, then set 
destination cell to range A2. Otherwise, I need to find the next empty row. So I'd start in A1 and I'd use the equivalent of control down arrow key, which is end Excel down in VBA. And then I need to offset by one row. So in other words, move one row down from the last consecutive value within column A. There's one little caveat here though. If someone wasn't to enter a call number on the form in the call tracking sheet, then I would end up over typing a record using the logic that I've expressed here. So what I'm saying here is if the number called on the call tracking sheet is empty, then before I transfer that record over to the log sheet, I get a little message that says, you must enter a number called before adding to the log, and then it exits this sub procedure. So assuming that someone has entered a telephone number for the call, what it can then do is copy over the values held in these variables to the call log sheet. So number called, which is the first column in the call log sheet is copy to dest cell or destination cell, which if you remember is either A2 or the next available cell in column A. Then call duration, which if I have a look at the call log sheet is in column B, is copy to destination cell dot offset, no rows, one column. So in other words, one column to the right of the dest cell range, which is either A2 or the next available row in column A, and so on and so forth. As you go through this, you can see it's pasting it into the relevant column. Then the last bit of the code just clears the content in each cell within the call tracking sheet. And here I'm just using clear contents to do that. So hopefully with that walkthrough, you will be able to adapt this code for your particular project. Now I'm just going to close down the Visual Basic Editor. And if I move back to the call tracking sheet, I'm just going to make this button slightly bigger so we can see the text. And before you can use this button, one thing you will need to do is to switch off design mode. So if I click on the design mode button, that means that button will now work and will run that macro. One other thing to consider, because your workbook now contains a macro, you will need to save the workbook as a macro enabled workbook. So when you go to file, save as, a file type must be Excel macro enabled workbook. Saving it as a normal workbook will actually delete the macro. So you will lose the functionality. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.